That's interesting. So, so we've we've and, and this the question. I'm directing this to Alex, but uh, T, I, I'm under the assumption that you might be similar. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Um, when you do enter your positions and you you do your analysis, you find a trade that suits what you want. You pull the trigger. Mm-hmm. Your process of setting targets is that based on where you've put your stop loss, or is that based on where you can see this asset moving? Oh, good question again. Um, it's strategy dependent in the sense that um, <clears throat> I'm always targeting um, supply and demand zones or uh, imbalances within the marketplace or um, uh, previous liquidity zones, such as um, equal equal highs or equal, equal low positions. Mm-hmm. So um, my strategy in a sense is um, the same way I get into my positions is the same way I get out of my positions. So I'm always targeting, for example, um, um, areas of uh, uh, where there's previous liquidity, so for price to uh, sweep a, a, an area of previous liquidity, once again, either equal highs, equal lows, or um, just to fill an imbalance. So that same entry confirmations are also my same exit confirmation. So I target the exact same things on the opposite side. So I'll be targeting, once again, liquidity areas to get out of my positions or to um, um, hedge positions to get in on the other side. And once again, just to let the positions battle themselves out. So um um if i'm i can make a case on the chart actually if i'm looking for example on gu i've closed that a few positions actually um just to bank some profits before i get in a few more so um i can give myself a couple of to, um, rolling in that money that yeah I'm, i've money. learned from the other time so <laughs> i've got bank <laughs> positions quick so um yeah gu um once again this would be a, a point of interest for me so if price comes in and if i was to take a buy i'd be initially looking at this little imbalance to see what may happen oh, um God. if i was uh, looking at being a seller on this position once again i would just be looking to see what i can get in on this uh, particular uh, sell side of the position um and i'd be targeting more or less where the price is coming into so um yeah my my strategy involves um the same confirmations that i used to enter into my positions is the same confirmation that i used to, uh, used to exit my positions so um once again I'll, I'll just be looking at the same things on the opposite side of the markets um if i'm looking to hold it for longer then i'll just be looking at it on the on the higher time frames as opposed to the uh, the lower time frames and seeing okay if i was to hold it to um uh, for example this if i was to get into a buy i'd be looking at this uh, particular zone this uh, particular um sell side position and if we did get up there, then I'd be looking at how I could get into sales or from the exact same position. So um, uh, that's the overall. That's what it involves: supply and demand concepts, um, some um, uh, imbalance plays, and uh, just liquidity, um, possible liquidity areas to to take um, some profits off the table. Um, so yeah, that's overall. That's uh, what my um, strategy looks like in a sense. Fair enough. So I, I, yeah. So I know you obviously asked us both the kind of the question. I always used to have price targets at very ambitious levels. Obviously, bigger levels on bigger time frames. But I was a day trader trading on a five minute and a one minute. So you've got levels on four hours and dailies, and you're aiming for those. But you're trading intraday with intraday levels that you're not really paying attention to because you haven't marked them on the chart. So when i would put a, a stop loss let's say for for argument's sake it would be 10 pips which i don't have stop losses for 10 pips but let's say if it was 10 pips these days mm-hmm. then i would aim for let's say 40 pips mm-hmm. and that's it i'm in and out and that's that's it and i would take i would take profits a little bit sooner if we've got something like a dynamic ema that is like a dynamic part of support and resistance mainly on a 15 minute chart if it's the first touch of that from a big leg down, then I'm going to tend to take profits or maybe even mostly just take the profits off the table. I won't really move the stops into break even. And that's what I tend to do these days. And I feel much better about that. Even if it does go to those bigger levels, I can always get back in when mm. price has got past those uh, resistance levels and then uh, they turn to, to support and things like that. I don't mind getting back in but I'm no longer pushing the boundaries of uh, where price can go because Forex 
is such a ranging market and there's so much going on with commercial buying and all of these different people coming into the market all the time sometimes when you're on the lower time frames it gets quite choppy and it doesn't mean you're wrong on the position you just might be in a position that is just getting chopped around now just because of normal buying and selling and mm -hmm. that's why i think putting the rr for me there was just get in get out and that's it hey guys jordan here just wanted to send you a personal little thank you for sticking around and watching us here at trade delicious if you did enjoy the content consider subscribing everything we do here is completely free and of course we have some other video suggestions here which you might love we will see you in the next video